Well, good morning. Uh, we're going to talk about drying plants and mounting plants in the Riker Mount for the Emily B. Camp Herbarium. Please keep in mind that the purpose of these mounts is for the public, for public education, help people identify plants and learn something about the plants. So this is a microwave technique. Why the microwave? The microwave technique has some advantages over the traditional air drying technique. One of the biggest advantages is that it is fast and it is easy. You'll see it only takes a couple minutes to dry a plant. Another advantage is many people claim that microwaving the plants preserves the color of the specimen better than air drying. A third advantage is that microwaves kill bugs, it kills the insects. If people put uh, plants in a press, sometimes they come back several days later to find that some little creature has eaten holes in it. You won't have that problem using a microwave. So what do you need to microwave, uh, to dry plants with a microwave? Well, obviously you need a microwave. Then you need uh, something that is flat, a flat surface. I have a ceramic tile here. You could use a quarter inch thick piece of glass or perhaps something else that is microwave proof. Then you're going to need paper towels. You're going to need something flat, uh, heavy, to flatten the specimens. This is a high-tech thing here, a little <laughs> uh, a pile of rocks. You need uh, hot pads because microwaves make things hot. And then for some of the specimens, you're going to want some tools to dissect thick parts of plants because, remember, thick things won't fit into the, uh, into the riker mountain. So to begin with, you take your flat surface. You're going to put a couple layers of paper towels on this, on here. Place the specimen on top. And I have something that's fairly easy to do to begin with. Some kind of a daisy, quite frankly. I don't know what it is. I got it in my neighbor's yard. <laughs> uh, but let me say that when you do these, you want to always show the center of the blossom as well as the outer portions. And you want to show the upper surface and the under surface of leaves. Okay, and the stem you want to show, and sometimes the stem has thorns on it or it is fuzzy and that makes it particularly interesting. The other thing, you want to consider the roots. Now, for the most part, you don't care about the roots in the Riker Mounts because the public going to the park obviously doesn't see the roots and they may not be very interesting. But there are exceptions to that. Uh, you might, for example, want to show the rhizomes and roots of the uh, American beach grass because of the role it plays in stabilizing the dunes. And you might want to show uh, tap root. For example, people like to know that uh, yarrow is a, is a carrot, and they see that tap root. So sometimes the root is a virtue. Okay. There's a little root, hairy root on here. I really don't care about it, and I don't think that it'll fit into the Riker Mount. However, I can go ahead and dry this like this, and when I go to put it in the Riker Mount, it doesn't fit, just snip it off. But the technique is pretty simple. I have, I have this specimen here, and I have another par, uh, sample of the same plant. And you can do extra parts. In fact, I urge you to do spare parts, because if you do something and you don't want it, you simply discard it. But it's good to have a few extra pieces. So I'm going to take a couple extra leaves and put them here. And maybe when you're arranging the Riker Mount, you know, it's a rather artistic thing. You might want to put the whole plant and then put a, another few pieces around just because it looks like it. So I'll put that one is up. Uh, the upper surface is up. This is the under surface is shown. And as I arrange this, you know, you, you can be hard, tough with these things. You can cut them. Like that isn't going to show very well. So I may just snip it off because it's it won't look very good. But I have I have the upper surface and the under surface of the plant. And the, when I put the rocks on top of it, this will flatten, and you'll be able to see the center of the flower. So you put a couple uh, layers of paper towels down underneath the plant, a couple more on top. 
And the thicker the plant, the more moisture is in the plant, of course. So you may need more than a couple layers of paper towel. But this will. This specimen was not really f the freshest, but uh, when you do these, you're probably going to want to collect the samples and, and microwave them, dry them rather soon after you, you pick them, so they don't wilt. But whoops! So I, really, the purpose of the uh, of the paper then to absorb the moisture. Right. I. You do. You simply do this, and place it in the micro. You can. You're going to place this on top of the specimen to flatten it. I got into the habit of putting this in first, and putting the uh, stones on top of it. But you could do it the other way around. And you will learn. You probably don't have this up. But, but. Now you will you'll practice and you will learn how long to dry something for your microwave. And it it's just a matter of uh, practicing a few times. I'm going to try this for one minute. I, it's probably not long enough, but it may be. Now, uh, when I take this out, the first thing I'm going to do is look at the uh, paper towel. The paper towel is damp. The plant is damp, and you didn't do it long enough. But it's simply with another yeah. the, uh, if the plant is brown, you burned it. <laughs> so that one you discard and start a different one. But one of the advantages of this technique is if you if you destroy the plant, you've only lost a minute or two. It isn't weak. So we'll see what we have here in a few seconds. All right, I'll take this out. It, it seems to me that. Right it could be a little damp, mm -hmm. so I think I'll put this back in for another for another minute. Okay. okay. Sure. And it it takes a lot to burn them, really. So don't be too <laughs> fearful of that. Well, we have. I can uh, yeah, yes, we have. Say, been in my kitchen for a while. Yeah, this isn't making my hand, this isn't getting hot, so I think it's not. All right, I think we're better off this time. And your, the root did come out all right. If you wanted to use this, you could. And the, and the plant is, is pretty much dry. Okay, the leaves, again, you want to show the upper surface and the undersurface when you mount. I wanted this. This is a, a trumpet-shaped flower, and there are trumpet-shaped flowers at Island Beach State Park. So, along with the, the same principle, when you're arranging this, you really you don't see the center of this plant at all at right now. So you you're pro you may want to take off more than one leaf, uh, petal here. But just t just take off what you need to to be able to see the center. Now I can see the center of the flower. And if you're going to do this display, you might do one flower this way and then dry another one just intact. Okay. So you can can see the all parts. The, also, you may find that the several plants, the leaves are going to be too long. Just cut them in uh, maybe three pieces. And as you arrange your Riker mount, you're going to put the pieces side by side so that it's pretty obvious to the viewer that those pieces are all one leaf. What, what we have here is a tape cutter for the herbarium mounts. Now this herbarium tape cutter is on a piece of wood so that we can secure it to a tabletop because we're going to tug on this and if it's not mm -hmm. secure it's difficult. Okay, this, this is secure. And then we are going to put the color tape on here and you know that these mounts are color coded by the mm -hmm. plant community and the found at Island Beach State Park. So I'm going to put the tape on the back here and it can, there's a little place to lock 
I have a glow in the back there? No. Yes, you do. Do I? Mm -hmm. okay. Now you can lock the tape in position here. I don't know that that's, that I turned out to be so useful. You can <laughs> wiggle back and forth, but in any case, you want to tape, you want to tape this, excuse me, probably on the sides first, mm -hmm. but definitely the bottom last, because as these uh, displays are moved up and down in the display case, if the sides are overlapping the bottom, the tape comes off. Mm -hmm. It, it works loose. So be sure to tape the bottom last. Okay? Now what you do is <clears throat> somebody just pulls it out. Sorry. And this is this is lined up so that you can be sure you're straight. Okay. And then aligning it with the way it was before. You went half in the front and half in the back basically. And then you simply move the cutter across this way. That's it. A nice sharp edge. Nice sharp edge. And then you fold it over. That's all there is to it. Hmm. I can now, see how helpful that is, though, to this, get a really oh nice, yeah. clean edge on your tape. Yes. Now, what we also have a couple other things here. We have the backs. Uh, in the past, people liked to that. see what was uh, uh, so additional information. We have additional information about the plant on the backs. The front has some identifying information. The back has additional scientific information. And then it has a whole section on folklore. And this would be the utility of the plant. Maybe wildlife use it for food or shelter. Humans in the past may have used it for medicine or for food. Mm -hmm. And then there's a lot of, of superstition. Before there was science, there was superstition. And plants played a major part in that. Today we still have the four-leaf clover and the, uh, the daisy where you can pull off the petals, loves me, loves me not, loves me, loves me. <laughs> in, in the past, plants played a lot, a major role in festivities and in people's lives. So that sort of thing is of general interest and can be placed on the back.